Hello, friends. I want to tell you about my new book, The Gospel Simplified. You can get this at Amazon. Type in Dwayne Dunaway and it'll pull this up. You can get it from a link at my website, DwayneDunaway.com. You can go and order it. You can also read it for free. We always point this out that uh, the chapters in this book are articles on my website. So if you like to read stuff online or can't buy the book or whatever, you can still go and read it. But if you'd like to read a book you can hold in your hands, and would like to support the ministry, this is a great way to do it, and we would certainly appreciate it. Get the book if you can and if you want to, and uh, we want to say always that we appreciate you uh, watching our videos and uh, just taking part in the things that we're putting out. This is just a new thing, the gospel simplified. So get it if you would like to have it. If not, read it at my website. Welcome to the Assembly Podcast. We thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you. We do the best we can to just present uh, simple lessons about Jesus. One question that comes up over and over, and we understand why, is why is there so much suffering in the world? If God is all powerful and God is all loving, why is there suffering in the world? And there are several ways uh, to uh, attack that question. Uh, not that it's a bad question. Anytime you start with, if there is a God, that's not a good question. There is a God. God's, uh, the evidence for God's existence is around us on every side, everywhere we look. So what we're really asking hopefully is, well, since God is loving and God is all powerful, why is there suffering in the world? I'd like to have a better understanding of that. Uh, there are some things about that we will never understand. We don't run the universe. We did not create the universe. And the Bible makes it clear throughout that we will never fully understand the mind of God, at least not in this life. And we're not supposed to. We're supposed to trust him. There at the end of Romans chapter 11, Paul, who did not understand everything God did and uh, fully uh, admitted that, and he was an inspired apostle of Christ and wrote uh, you know, most of the New Testament. But there were things he did not understand. And he said, who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has become his counselor? Um, his ways are past finding out. And when it comes to suffering, his ways are past finding out. But there are several things to consider. Number one, if God did not exist, then where would we be as far as suffering? Would there still be suffering in the world? Let's say God doesn't exist. Is there still suffering in the world? Let's say the atheist is right. God doesn't exist. There's still suffering in the world. Why is there suffering in the world if God doesn't exist? Uh, whose fault is it then? Would you say it's humanity's fault? It's because of things that we have done and because of our greed, because we want to build empires instead of find medications to help sick people and, you know, all sorts of examples that could be given like that. Um, yes, suffering still exists. Even if you took God out of the, the picture and say there is no God, what do you do with the problem of suffering then? Uh, the fact that there's suffering in the world has nothing whatsoever to do with whether or not God exists. God does exist. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that God did not create the world with the intention of suffering. Suffering came about as a result of humanity's rebellion against God. And it goes back to the fall in the Garden of Eden. Um, nobody listening to this and nobody who has ever taught on the subject uh, understands everything that happened in the Garden of Eden. I don't understand it. You don't understand it. No one fully understands it. Uh, but when humanity sinned against God, the world fell in some sense. And uh, there has been suffering ever since. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that when you look at the suffering in the world and it hurts you and you say, I don't understand. God, why don't you stop the suffering? One of the things you need to keep in mind is that God knows about all of the suffering in the world. You only know about what you're you know, privy to, what, what your experience allows you to know. You know about your own suffering. You know about the suffering of people you know. You know about suffering that you learn about as far as wars and things like that. God knows the suffering of every single person on this earth. You know, Matthew chapter 10 says the hairs of your head are all numbered. And that applies to everybody. He knows everything about everyone. So he knows every amount of suffering that goes on in this world. Now, who do you think cares more about the suffering in the world and is hurt more by the suffering in the world? You, me, 
are God. We cannot possibly care as much about human suffering as the God who created humans cares about it. All right. So people say, well, you know, when you look at the flood of Noah's day, God killed animals and he killed men, women, and children and all these things in the flood. Um, and that's true. And uh, from our standpoint, that's that's hard to to understand. Uh, but he took 120 years to do it. The world was so wicked and so vile that he waited 120 years before he sent the flood after warning that he was going to do it. And the other thing to remember is, do you think you care more about the suffering of men, women, and children and animals than the God who created them? Your little pet, your, your fur babies, as you call them, you love them, right? You love them with all your heart. You don't love them as much as God loves them. You can't possibly love them as much as God loves them because God created them. Remember that. You love your children? Yes. Would die for your children in a heartbeat. But you don't love your children as much as God loves them because he did die for them. And not only that, he created them. So when we're talking about the suffering in the world, it should remind us that God has a heart and it hurts him too. We should be thinking if it hurts me, and bothers me this much that there is suffering in the world, can you imagine what it does to the heart of God? And then finally, here's something else to think about and remember. How did God choose to respond to the suffering of the world? He could have just stopped it and wiped it out, I suppose. You could look at it from that standpoint and say, God could have just said there's going to be no suffering in the world. Uh, that would have been much easier than the path he chose. Because what he chose to do was to allow the suffering to happen as the result of sin. And just like every day, he allows people to rebel against him. I have preached before a sermon called, If I Were God or If We Were God, How Things Would Be Different. And um, things would be a lot different if you were God or I were God, I promise you. People would not be going around questioning and mocking us. But he allows that every day, and that causes suffering on his part. He is hurt every day by the sin and the sickness and the suffering in the world. But here's what he chose to do about it. He chose in the person of Jesus Christ to become a man, to live in this sin-cursed world. And he didn't just come in as a full-grown man. He came in as a baby, a baby. All right, think about that. At one time, you were a baby. I was a baby. We were babies, totally dependent on grown-ups for everything, our food, having our diapers changed, everything. Jesus, the God of the universe, the God who created the universe, the Son of God, God the Son, came into the world as a baby, put himself in that vulnerable position. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever looked at a little baby and thought about God became a baby? When he came into this world, he came in this world to suffer because everybody who lives in this world is suffering. As you say, as we point out, there is so much suffering in the world. Well, he came into the world to suffer, and he chose to come into the world to suffer, and he lived a real human life. He went from being a baby to being a toddler to, you know, growing up, being a small boy to being a, a teenager to, to being a grown man. And all that time, there was suffering. Um, you know, no one lives in this life without suffering. Jesus suffered. And then that was just normal living before his ministry started. And then he experienced some tremendous suffering when he ran around telling people that he came to save them. And of course, ultimately, it led to the cross and uh, check out our podcast on the suffering of Jesus, um, because that's what Jesus chose to do. That's what God chose to do in response to the suffering. So when you think about the suffering that goes on in the world, think about Jesus and the suffering it did for you. And it won't answer all of your questions, but do you have to have all of your questions answered before you will trust in the living God who gave life to you and loves you and saves you? Let's forget about the things we don't understand and let's focus on what we do know. We do know that God loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, no matter who they are, 
it will not perish. It's what we deserve. We deserve to perish. We deserve to suffer eternally because of the way we have treated God. But we won't perish. We will have everlasting life. And that will help you to see this life is short and the suffering of this life is temporary. And we will soon be with Jesus and it'll all be over. Think about these things. I'm no expert on Bible subjects. I'm no expert on human suffering. Uh, I know my suffering is real, and I know your suffering is real. But the only one who is the expert on it is God, and we need to trust him. Because everything he does and everything he allows has a purpose behind it, and that purpose is for your good, his glory. Those two things work together. He's proven that he loves you, and he does. And don't ever forget that. And don't let the devil and the questions in your own mind, the questions of the world or the way the world mocks him, uh, get your mind off of these very important things. All right. Well, it was a short podcast, but that's a lot to think about. And I hope that you will think about these things. Uh, because give God the benefit of the doubt and look at things from his standpoint. It'll change your life. Uh, thank you for being with us. We look forward to being with you next time on the Assembly Podcast. Mm-hmm.